Now that we know about lots of different kinds of sequences, the one we built ourselves for cursive lists, but also tuples, lists, ranges, and strings, we can talk about how to process them efficiently and effectively. So it turns out that sequences are so ubiquitous in computer science that many large programs are organized around manipulating sequences. And that's called sequence processing. So sequence processing is when we build lots of modular components, each of which can transform one sequence into another. And then we mix and match those components in order to perform whatever computation we want. So let's look at some examples first. Here are two different problems that will involve sequence processing. Sum the even members of the first n Fibonacci numbers. List the letters in the acronym for a name, which includes the first letter of each capitalized word. These two problems don't seem immediately related, but they are, because they both involve sequence processing. So here's an approach to computing the first. First, we enumerate the natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to n. Then, we map a function over each one. Mapping a function over a sequence means applying the same function to each element of the sequence. And by, matching fib, map, and by mapping the fib function, we then get the first n Fibonacci numbers. That seems like progress toward our goal. The next thing we do is we filter that sequence to keep only the even elements, which are 0, 2, 8, and 34, etc. So once we've filtered out the even ones, we can sum them up to get the sum of the even members of the first n Fibonacci numbers. Summing these gives us the number 44. So what we've done here is we've stated two functional components that we'll need in order to finish the sequence processing problem. We need to be able to compute the nth Fibonacci number with the function fib, and we need to test whether something's even or not with the function even. The rest of the work is in putting these functions together in a sequence processing pipeline. What about the other one? List all the words in an acronym for a name. Well, first we need to enumerate the words that we're going to compute the acronym of. How about University of California, Berkeley? Then we need to filter this sequence using a function that tells us whether each word is capitalized. University, California, and Berkeley are all capitalized. Next, we'll map a function over those that gives us the first letter of each, UCB. And then we'll accumulate those into a tuple. And we'll get the tuple UCB, the acronym for the University of California, Berkeley. So we talked about two different general ways of processing sequences. Mapping a function over a sequence is one of them, and it means applying a function to each element of the sequence. So if I start out with a sequence of numbers that we'll call alternates here as a tuple, and then I map a function such as abs, which computes the absolute value, over those elements, I'm not applying abs to the whole tuple. Instead, I'm applying abs to each element in turn. And if I construct a tuple out of the result, I'll get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the absolute value of negative 1 is 1, etc. So the return value of map is an iterable map object, which means it's something that can be passed into later sequence processing steps. And one of those is to create a tuple out of it. So this is actually a constructor for the built-in map type. Map is not a function in Python, but it's easy to think about it as a function. Let's take a look at that. So what have I told you so far? I told you that if I create uh, sequence of alternating numbers, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, but the signs alternate, then I can map a function over that, such as abs, and I will then get an iterable sequence over the absolute value of each element. Now what is absolutes? It's a map object. We have yet to turn it into a tuple or sum its elements or anything like that. But we can do so just by calling tuple on the result, and then I'll get 1, 2, 3, 4. Though instead, if what I wanted to do 
was sum that contents, then I could do that and get the sum of 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, I think we're ready to solve our problem, sum the first n Fibonacci numbers. So we need a function fib n, which will re return the n Fibonacci number. And what will it do? Well, if n equals 1, we'll return 0. Otherwise, let's use a for statement to do it this time. We can keep track of the previous and current element, which start out at 0 and 1. So right now, current is the second Fibonacci number. And then we'll need to update previous and current repeatedly. So how many times are we going to do that? Well, we're starting out at 2, and we'll go up to n. So how many times will this occur? Well, it will occur n minus 2 times. Why have I used this strange underscore as the name in my for statement? Well, it's because I don't actually need to name the number in this range. All I need to do is make sure that the body or suite of this for statement happens n minus 2 times. And what is the body? Previous and current are rebounds to current and previous plus current, respectively. And then we return the current value. What else do we need? We need to know whether a number is even. Return whether dividing n by 2 gives us a remainder of 0. And then, if we want the sum of the first n Fibonacci's, we will return the sum of filtering using the even function, the result of computing the first n Fibonacci numbers, starting at 1 and going up to and including n. Okay. So if I want the first n Fibonacci's for 10 elements, then I'll get 44. And if we want to see how that happened, we can trace this function, and we can trace this function. So now if we compute the first n Fibonacci numbers, a lot of work is being done. It's computing fib1 is 0 and saying that's even. It's computing fib2 is 1 but saying that is not even and so it will be disregarded. And eventually we have fib34 which is true as well. And that gives us a sum of 44. So what about that other problem we had? Well, we wanted to compute acronyms. So let's write acronym first. And then we'll build up its components, doing it in the opposite order of what we did last time. So acronym of a name is a tuple of mapping a function which computes the first letter of each word over all the capitalized words in name. Now what are these component functions? Well first takes in some string and returns its first letter. And what is capitalized to do? Capitalized returns true if the length of this word is at least one and the first letter is an uppercase letter. So what are we going to compute the acronym of? Well, how about Berkeley is the University of California at Berkeley, and we're going to need to split that up into its individual words. Okay, so what is Berkeley? Well, Berkeley is a list of words, University of California at Berkeley, and if I compute the acronym of that, I will get UCB. 